Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome. It's a weekend read for the Soul family. It's a collective read for whoever resonates. Just uh, do check it out. It's a spiritual read, not so much about love and relationship exactly like my normal read. That's reads for spirituality, manifestation, love, relationships, more uh, less about romantic love. Um, today, for the weekend, I do a special reading. I use the heart spread, uh, my kind of go-to spread I, I use. And uh, for the, instead of the other person being a romantic interest, we're going to make this uh, the um, higher self, how I conceive of it. Now, this could be uh, however you conceive of it, God, Jesus, Buddha, um, you know. Um, I kind of think what I'm asking here is for alignment. In a natal chart or in astrology, you might call this the Uranus energy, uh, which is the higher octave of Mercury, so the higher mind. You know, Mercury is good, dealing with all the details. Um, Uranus coming in uh, with the big picture here. Um, and we're asking here how, about alignment. How's the alignment going, you know, with their higher uh, self? And we'll see how their energy is. Instead of being our lover, this is just our self here. So we're in the inner dialogues of their spiritual reading um, with ourselves, how this is intended, however that rolls for you. Now, I got stopped by the rain. I was going to try to wait it out because I checked, actually, we're supposed to be any rain here in Cancun, Mexico. I don't know if you can hear it. It's raining uh, like a cow pissing on a flat rock out there right now. So I, I was going to try to hold out for a few minutes because I felt like the reading was going so well. And I get ninth house as Taurus. I don't like to give up on readings. It's like a superstition. It really is, uh, um, especially this reading, okay? So if you get the idea where I'm going here, I'm reading the overall energy of the deck. The damn fit is it's six cups, soulmates. So it's, of course, soulmates. Um, um, this is the, the alignment with our soul. And as I was saying, this shows where we're at in the round, this alignment with ourselves, our higher selves, our spiritual selves, our true path, our destiny, however you want to look at it. You know, it's seen in the natal chart in many ways, it, the nodes, but everything, really. <laughs> it's kind of like, a, I think, the natal chart's the star map of our soul's purpose here in life, simple as that. You can see it once you learn to read it. But I love the Queen of Cups being there. And then now the higher self comes in. How are they interacting? How are they feeling, you know, as they're coming in with us? Five of Pentacles, lack mentality, not good enough going back solid, something deep inside, you know? And I said, like, I think like the Queen of Cups is the perfect energy. This is not a page, this is a queen. And this is emotions, being emotionally whole and open and available and vul able to be vulnerable, but strong. And, you know, the queen here is facing into the reading, facing into our higher self. Um, and I think with this Five of Pentacles, it's so heavy. It's like, you know, it's kind of saying, look, you're, you're in the 3D reality. You're incarnated in a body. Um, and so I wanted to clarify that. I went, went on a while, but Ten of Pentacles clarification slays me, Ten of Pentacles. Um, it, what I get out of this, it's like the higher self's trying to say, the system's not broken. I saw a political man, forgive me the reference, but, you know, the system's not broken. You know, it's made this way. It's supposed to be this way, you know, and, and we're doing exactly the right thing. And it isn't easy to become a queen of cups, you know, that's a progression. Um, that's someone who's uh, in bringing in our emotions, opening ourselves emotionally to our own higher self, um, to our soul's work, our destiny. I feel like it, because I can kind of feel it. It's like stepping into a stream that starts, that's flowing and it, you can kind of just feel it, you know. Uh, flowing better, you know, whereas before it's kind of ah, it's sticky and whatever, all of a sudden you're in this place where you feel like, wow, everything's just kind of flowing. Um, and it's that sort of kind of energy. And it's kind of a reassurance, you know, Pinnacles, got to think Capricorn, got to think Saturn, souls enter, some say, uh, incarnation through the rings of Saturn. And in terms of astrology, Saturn governs the maturation, life and death, all these things. Um, always restricting, limiting. And so I think like, you know, I'm saying, I've, I've gone to the other side, it, mostly through large doses of uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms and ego death. 
but you know, it, to me, it was pure ecstatic bliss. And when I came back, you know, I gave it a lot of thought. Um, you know, I didn't do this a lot more than once. And um, my thought was, it's like, if we exist outside of this reality and the greater realities, we already exist in a state of pure ecstatic bliss. Um, why would we come here, you know, in order to then, I guess I'm saying most religions, like the goal is to raise our vibrations, which I don't argue with that and everything. But it's just, I had this sense of the reason we come here is exactly the opposite. We're... We we're never born, we never die. We don't have, our natural spiritual self really has no concept of beginning, of end, of loss, of need, of desire. Um, there's just all of that I think is gone and it's like that's maybe what this world is, like some kind of training ground. Because imagine our eternal self. And in order to be the, our greatest, maybe there's a necessity to understand concepts like limits and ends and need and lack you know but at the same time knowing that there really is no lack and there really is no lead need you know it, uh, in the world of spirit it's like that's the only uh, the only real security you know saturn offers no security never does saturn even well i guess saturn offers security sounds like if you work hard if you do the right thing steady steady you, you know, you're probably going to do a lot better than if you fucked off. Saturn will give you that. But Saturn basically comes in and says, you're going to die. You know, um, you have, yeah, I could tell you, but you ain't got a lot of time to get on it. Because <laughs> it's going to end, definitely. You get it? Like, this is it. That's it. You know? So, but that's not the way it is. So we're dealing with this. It's like this, uh, I think the more spiritually aware you are, and I, I, I'm not at that level when I'm above it yet. Uh, so it just feels like this uh, contradiction or block, you know, that you kind of want to, uh, I do anyway, want to sort of rise above feeling that limit, that five of pinnacles. Now it comes in, how do we feel towards the higher self? And I got this three of wands. It really got me hard, hard, hard got me. Um, just this strong desire, wands, fire, threes, actions, third house, communication, this is prayer. This is intention. Speaking out loud to our guides and angels. You know, uh, where are my ships? And you know, I was thinking back, you know, realistically, imagine, you know, we didn't have sense enough to just try to make good friends with the indigenous people lived here. So we're starving to death here. I mean, our forefathers here, if you want, or the people from England. And uh, they're, imagine how hard they want that ship to come in going to the shore and waiting, such a strong, it's a need, it's a need, and imagine the Queen of Cups bringing this need, so it's taking it to a very high level, you know, it's it's really like almost on the knees going, please God, you know, uh, let me grow, let me, um, and I feel this, you know, lead me, guide me, I pray guide me and keep me safe, and give me strength, that's all I ask anymore, simple as that, guide me. Protect me and give me strength. And that's, I feel that, you know, well, so what is theirs? And they're meeting our three of wands with the three of cups. Now, this is not your normal three of cups, not your normal reading. Your, your, your higher self is not fooling around on you. And three of cups, anyway, I hate that always being the interpretation because it's exactly like the three of wands. Oh, instead of fire reactions, it's deep emotions. And what are we coming in as? The Queen of Cups. And how are we reacting to them? We want, you know, we really want to rise up. We really want whatever it is we want spiritually. We want to grow. We want to step into our power, step onto our path. What are they responding with? I think it's like saying just, you know, you're the Queen of Cups. We're the Queen of Cups. Just really go lean into that, you know, be the Queen of Cups. It's emotional too because uh the three of wands to me it's the little disturbed actions wanting to do something wanting to do something feeling like we have to do something and this is kind of like saying all you have to do is feel i want i don't want to say be because that's the thing all you have to do is be man no it's like all you have to do is feel you know obviously that doesn't work really if you feel horrible 
Um, but the Queen of Cups, you know, is feeling confident. Someone that's mastered their emotions, um, you know. Um, and at that point, you know, the Queen of Cups is in line to be the High Priestess, feminine, uh, figuring prominently, okay? And um, so by trusting the emotions, you know, um, she can maybe get to this higher level of consciousness, which is kind of uh, like we're saying, or into a better alignment, you know, with our spiritual self. Um, so it's bringing kind of fire and water. If you want to look in your chart, you know, where is your fire? And where is your water? And we always remember that fire is not only Aries, it's the first house. It's not only Leo, it's the fifth house. It's not only Sagittarius, it's the ninth house. Uh, water, you know, it's not only Cancer, you know, in the fourth house. And it's not only Scorpio in the eighth house. And it's not only Pisces, it's the twelfth house. So we're looking for water. I can almost guarantee it's going to be guiding us in the charts. There's probably something going on with water in our charts to start with. To get us in here, you know, something around the signs that, um, you know, it's our water. You know, me, it's Cancer, uh, Moon. It's uh, being opposed by Pluto. And, you know, I'm finding this opposition to be good luck hiding something from yourself. I mean, you might have been able to hide it from somebody else before, but that's not going to work. And you ain't even going to hide it from yourself anymore. Good luck with that. And it's, anybody's had close Pluto transits, strong Pluto transits. You are this. It was a joke. It was like, eh, it's not really a plan. It's like, yeah, well, you, go tell Pluto that. <laughs> it's probably the most powerful influence in the chart a lot of times by transit, man. Pluto's no joke, man. I'll duke it out with Saturn. We should, you know, die at, uh, you know, reasonable death, you know, but Pluto, you don't want to, you know, it's like, mm -mm. it's kind of, you know, Pluto, don't go. Okay. Seven of Pentacles. Now, this is the advice for you in dealing with the higher self. Remember, we had the Five of Pentacles and the Ten of Pentacles clarifying it as them, as your higher self. I do disassociate. I won't lie. I do it on purpose. It really helps me do my Mercury. I like to take it apart and I watch how things interact, you know? It's like, a, yeah. So this is what we're doing here. And this is, um, this is advice. Is, I think this advice is about harvesting. Often in romantic relationships and my other readings, I usually relate this to some feeling of, uh, not being reciprocated by a partner usually it's true pinnacles are things um i think in this position as, as advice from spirit it's just saying like look at your harvest look what you've actually harvested and you know this woman doesn't look unhappy and that tree is you know full of pinnacles and pinnacles are solid things you know uh, money resources okay and if not that, it's a very solid grounding. You know, this is advice from spirit. You know, this is not about like uh, getting a car and having a big bank account. It's like getting to where you don't even give a fuck if you got a car or have a big bank account. You're so good. Like, like untouchable. You know, ten of pentacles on a five of pentacles. That's like, you know, uh, you get some kind of game where you get uh, to start over uh naked and afraid in the forest and uh, you figure it out and you're all right after a while <laughs> yeah that's like that energy and so think of that seven of pentacles along those lines it's you know uh i was just listened to michael fronte <laughs> firing up this morning uh in spearhead um uh, don't count your uh a, a wise man counts his blessings a fool counts his problems that kind of energy here. So, you know, it, not just counting blessings, but uh, understanding what we have, what our resources are, how great it is with queens, how much of it can be internal. This is a spiritual read. It's like how far along the path we already are, how close we already are, you know, with this going on. And now this is the King of Wands. This is not somebody else. This is our higher self speaking. This is the advice from spirit for the higher self. So is it the higher self spirit? I guess not in my cosmology. What I found, we have this soul. It's kind of like they wave my arm. It's out a few inches. People that see or see it, it's an energetic body that 
correspond to this corporeal body in which lies our spirit, which is the eternal self. And that's a separate thing. And that's what's attached, I believe, to source. Um, that's how I experienced it here. So we're talking about a communication from source to our higher self directly. I got to tell you guys, it, it just feels so strong to me. 88 Lionsgate, 88 Lionsgate, 2021. This was huge. Everything around it, the year, astrology. I mean, you know, could go on and on and on. Everybody, but we can't like forget it. It's still going on, and and the energy's coming in. And this is like, man, really positive. This is a powerful energy. It's hurting people. You know, I'm gonna say this here. Fuck it. You know, I believe this energy that's coming in, and I think it's from, like many people are saying, you know, our entire galaxy is moving through space at these fantastic speeds. Well, eventually moves into a different part of space. It's not inconceivable that different energies come from that part of space. And so this is what's happening, and this has been coming for a while. Anybody uh, that's an empath or light worker, just an empath, you're feeling this, you know. Um, and it's not exactly easy because it's very strong. And I think that it's just like UV light on mold in the bathroom. One of the cures, you set up your UV lights and you put it there and that kills the mold. This is UV light for low vibrational energy. It's raising everybody up. It's really powerful. And I won't mince any words. I hope this slays the reptilians and drives them away. It makes this reality uninhabitable for low vibrational entities. Call them what you will. We used to call them demons. Now we call them reptilians. Look at the pictures. It's the same thing, you know. But bye-bye. Goodbye, Felicia. That's what I got to say to the low. But I honestly, guys, I feel it's so strong. By 2025, 2026, I think it's going to be a lot better. It's going to be, everybody's going to be vibing so much higher. It's going to be some kind of removal of this negative energy, which I think is what's controlling a lot of our world. It has been probably forever, you know. Um, so as a benefit of this, individually, we're all getting supercharged by this energy. We have been for quite a while. And here's the good thing. Uh, what we're doing with it is, I think, exactly right, the Queen of Cups. This is coming to spirit, really emotionally open, giving our heart to ourselves. I uh, mean, this is uh, Queen of Cups. We're beyond uh, the Stuart smiling in the mirror stuff. We're good enough. We, we know that. We get all that. It's like now it's like it's this work really to grow as much as we can. It's like a yearning, a desire to give our cup to our own higher self, you know. And the higher self with the five of pentacles, the ten of pentacles, really saying it's everything's all right and exactly like it's supposed to be. This is the message I got from the mushrooms. Uh, everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And that's a tough thing to realize. Like, what if you're a caribou being eaten alive by a pack of wolves? Is that exactly the way it's supposed to be? Because it's going to be hard to convince the caribou. So I always call that whole thing the caribou uh, conundrum in my own mind. Uh, but I take that as true uh, in a spiritual sense. Everything's contracted. Everything's working. There's, uh, you know, reasons beyond reasons here. And it, so the three of pentacles too, um, this yearning that we're feeling, this desire, strong desire, and we're taking actions, saying prayers out loud, uh, doing rituals, whatever this might be. This could be going on walkabouts. This could be so many... However, we really spiritually desire and reach out to spirit, you know, more than just simply a little thought, like we're just, you know, um, it's that little kid on their knees praying at that energy, okay? <sighs> Eight of Wands. <laughs> Eight of Wands. Okay, so powerful. This is like Three of Wands, but it's like pour it on. This is the energy raining down, and this is the advice from spirit for how this is normally, uh, I show here that how the relationship as a whole, what is the advice from spirit for the best of the, the, the highest good of the relationship as a whole. So for the highest good, obviously what we want for our highest self and our lowest selves, our, our mercury mind, 
and our Uranus mind for this integration and union so that we are at our very highest self, highest peak. It's just saying here, now we have the, remember the king of wands here is a pour it on with the eight of wands. Pour it on. Uh, Google uh, Biddy Tarot eight of wands or one and just if you're not real familiar, because it's very important here, uh, this energy. Um, and you know, there's a, with the seven of pentacles, there's a, uh, there's going to be like a recognition. Yes, I do have enough. Wait, 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 I do it. You know, it's like we're praying. Look, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying, we're praying. And we're praying because we think like we're harvesting and like, I don't know. It's a good enough harvest. And we want more, we want more. And then, you know, it's going to be raining. I think this is manifestation. We'll go that way with it. Kept talking earlier with the Alliance Gate, the manifestation was pouring down, pouring down. And I feel this again. This is all with the overall energy of the Six of Cups, guys. I think this is about like, there's been enough like thinking and sorting and getting ready. And in terms of a really a fully integrating with our highest self, it's on. It's absolutely on. Everybody's talking about all the terrible things going to happen in October. I'll tell you what's going to happen in October. It's going to be a boomerang effect, you know, and there's going to be a slingshot effect when all the planets start to, by November, and everybody's, not everybody, but uh, Jupiter and Saturn's a big one, moving direct, and I think, like, everybody, give them a minute to get going, and, and it's going to be on. And this is spiritual energy now. You know, it could be, like, some kind of, almost like a hardening process. I think we've been going through this for years, uh, it just seems to be getting stronger and stronger. And maybe we're kind of getting used to it. And we can just really pour it on now. And I think this is raising, you know, it's, it's truly, uh, this is a tide that raises all boats. And don't we need it? It'll raise just the vibrations. I mean, if you're in the gutter at a terrible vibration, it's going to raise it. If you're at a high vibration, it's going to raise it. And the Ace of Pentacles is the outcome. Now that, I mean, is look at how robust that elk is. I guess that's an elk, yes. Incredibly robust, you know, the muscles rippling. And remember, that's a pinnacle. Remember, we had five and ten of pinnacles. And here we are with the outcome. This is full union. And, you know, I think, like, what it's going to be surprising, I'm getting this feeling, uh, it's going to be surprising to us how much we feel it in our body. And how real it feels, this experience. Uh, and I think it's very close. We're on it. I mean, it's like if there's any nece necessity with you for permission, this is like pour it on. Whatever that means, pour it on. Because, man, I want to be the Ace of Pentacles. That rocks. You know, I'm ready to feel it. Feel grounded. This is not pie in the sky, woo woo. This is grounded solid, real, you know, you can't take this away, Ace of Pentacles, this is something we got now in our body, so thank you guys.